afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Good afternoon. How is everybody doing? Good. It's a little chilly here in Ann, uh, Ann Arbor, but it's beautiful. My name is Natasha Tsakos, and today I want to celebrate. I want to celebrate our potential, our connections, and our diversity. Do you remember what you wanted to do when you were a kid? Do you? Did you want to be president or fly or be a superhero? When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, a detective, and a ballerina. Of course, all of them at the same time. So while there's a little bit of truth in all of these, I am still searching for that one word that defines what I do. I find titles either too vague or too defined, leaving no room for real exploration. We've become multimedia and transdisciplinary. It's time to rethink what we do and reinvent who we are. Believe it or not, the day I signed onto Twitter is the day I came up with a description. I like to invent possibilities through theatrical experiences. I love theater. And the first thing we learn in theater is suspend your disbelief. Suspend your disbelief. Because both audience and actors agree to believe for a short moment in time in the given set of circumstances, as extraordinary as they may be. As actors, we constantly assume different personalities. We become other people. We forget ourselves to accept a sometimes completely different point of view, going through the entire human emotions as these characters. And we now know that um, mirror neurons in our brain blur the line between the experienced and the observed. So the power of believing in something so much is actually as real as living it. I started working in nightclubs as a performance artist while in college, writing plays any time I could and producing them. Then was commissioned to create a show which became a five-year journey called Upwake. I started by myself.
As I said, I started by myself, very much like this, and ended up five years later with 19 collaborating artists, went from one movie screen to CGI projected on all four surfaces of the stage, synchronized to my actions. <sighs> Catching my breath. <laughs> I didn't want to use words, instead universal languages such as visuals, motion, and music, both pop and classical. And here are some excerpts. That's a little bit of Upwake. Yay. Thank you. Well, my character Zero then came to life and launched a green campaign. A team of animators and I just recently produced a commercial asking Starbucks to recycle and encourage customers like you and I to bring our reusable mugs back the next time we go. Why? Because it's important. Lately, I've been experimenting with two engineers using markerless motion capture technology, the future of human-computer interaction, finally combining the physical world with the virtual one. Through natural interface using gestures, one can trigger anything out of thin air. In this instance, sound. <laughs> I 
ride a bicycle. I've never owned a television in my life. Simply put, I am human and believe anything is possible. If you follow your heart, trust your instinct, free your genius, be audacious, don't listen to what other people say, and use your talent to better this planet we all share through whatever medium may be, you are my example of human success because we are all artists. You may not dance or act or paint, but you cook, you decorate, you host. There is an art in everything you do. It's discipline, curiosity, challenge. It's the quest for beauty, balance, and truth. It's a constant interpretation and projection of the world around us through our individual eyes. Hi. Last year, I met a remarkable woman. Her name is Henrika Menes with EcoWorks International. She has 20 years of experience in the international and hum humanitarian aid, directing projects in healthcare, social services, and education. When the earthquake happened early this year in Haiti, I immediately called her. Before you knew it, we were there, six of us performing anywhere we could, from camps to schools to orphanages to hospitals. can be great fun. So, nobody can predict what will happen in five, ten years from now. But we know that students will have 14 jobs by the age of 38. 
that an average worker will spend 10 years of his life emailing, that by 2013 there will be computers that exceed the performance of the human brain. That exceed the performance of the human brain. It may be so, because we've been acting as simplified computers, programmed to do one, two, three things, multitasking senselessly, abbreviating emotions, fast fooding transactions, relinquishing our memories to the clouds, losing meaning. Fat is cool, cool is hot, hot is fat, I'm confused. Trading our two million words for 140 characters? Come on, we are more than our twits. So things are changing and shifting at exponential speeds we can't even comprehend. And it can be both exciting and scary. I think it's exciting because a computer can't imagine, a computer can't dream, a computer can enable us to better express our creativity, our lunacy. But a program is not original, its programmer is, and unpredictable. We are mysterious, intuitive, expressive, intelligent, physical beings. In this technological race, let's not forget our humanity. Let's not forget our stories. Let's not forget the 90% free space of our internal hard drive. If there will be a supercomputer in three years from now, I want to be a superhuman. Don't you? Don't you? Yes. So let's, by sinking our talents, we can better intuit a new intelligence, by concentrating our energies, by truly fusing and converging disciplines, we will big bang ourselves into a new universe. We can become modern da Vinci's. Let's challenge our multitasking skills, harness our ADDs, spark our thousand trillion synapses into a connective, cross-collaborative, transcending extraordinarium and create positive change on this planet with either the hyper-sophisticated tools we have or the mobile device we are. Let's cultivate our many facets, our left and right, and the infinite spatial directions of our own axis. Let's be schizophrenics, damn it! By the way, did you know that brain scans reveal striking similarities in the thought pathways of highly creative people and those with schizophrenia? Apparently, creative people and schizophrenics have fewer D2 receptors in the thalamus, which means a lower degree of signal filtering, thus a higher flow of information. Psychologist Dr. Gary Fitzgibbon says, the ability to suspend your disbelief is one way of looking at creativity. Because when you suspend your disbelief, you're prepared to believe anything. Let's believe anything. It's a human and technological revolution. It's motion and emotion. It's physical, it's virtual, it's interactive, it's happening. The natural progression of science and art, finding each other to better touch and define the human experience. There is a revolution in the way that we think, in the way that we share, and in the way that we express our stories, our evolution. Charlie Chaplin innovated motion pictures and told stories with humor, music, silence, and poetry. 
He was social, and his character, the Trem, spoke to millions. He gave entertainment, pleasure, and relief to so many human beings when they needed it the most. We are not here to question the possible. We are here to challenge the impossible. Science is no longer fiction, but reality may become one. Before we augment it, before we decide to live eternally, before we reveal all of our transparencies, before we domesticate ourselves completely, maybe, just maybe, we should find time to discover ourselves again. Did you know that it would take over 600 years to watch all the content on YouTube? That 90% of the 200 billion emails sent daily are spam? And did you know that it takes one lump of coal to move one megabyte of information across the net? So, guess what I really want to do when I grow up? I want to be an astro performer, the next generation of artists performing in outer space. Last year, I participated in the DC-9 Lunar Parabolic Flight Study at NASA, as researchers were measuring my cardiovascular performance while in both zero-g and 0.6 gravity environments. Because the future we once imagined is the reality we live now. And because in this future, in this reality, I think art and culture better be at the forefront of this new frontier. Mathematics unfold, 
through origamis, when video games target medicine and education, when architecture embraces nature, when physics dance and dance clubs play Einstein, when we defy gravity, when we stop playing war, when TV starts saying something, when we produce without wasting, when engineering meets humanity's primary needs, when all of these are not just casualties, but a standard we all live up to, then we'll know I'll know I really live in the 21st century. So yes, let's celebrate our potential, our connections, and our diversity. Rise up, stand up, think tall, so we may gain altitude, vision, perspective, see beyond, and maybe elevate and be elevated. Thank you.